Okay, uh, lesson 3.3 .3 is about corresponding parts, which we've talked a little bit about already, as well as circles. So our targets, I can state the definition of congruence. That's a review. We've already used that. Uh, then I can use this definition to prove corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And then this deals with the circles. I can recognize radii, and I can apply that all radii in a circle are congruent to a two-column proof. All right, so let's talk about a circle, right? The most important part of a circle is actually the center of a circle, right? Because that defines the circle. So the set of all points, if I start putting points here, and they are all the same distance away from the center, so if I measure that distance and that distance and that distance and that distance, if they are all the same, all of those points together form a circle. So a circle is a set of points that are all the same distance from the center. Okay, so you probably knew what a circle was, but maybe never thought of it as an actual geometry definition. What we want to talk about today is the radius. The radius is what represents this distance from the center to any point on the circle. And I know you've heard of that before, so let's actually draw that in there. This right here is the radius. So a radius is the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circle. Okay, a little notation, right? They just draw a little circle with a center in it. That means a circle with center P. And then I'm sure you can guess, what do you think we know about AP BP and CP, all of these segments. We set it up here, all those radii have to be the same distance, so we know that they have to be congruent. And that is actually a theorem that you're going to put in the box below, so you can see it's a really easy theorem. We say if radii are in the same circle, or we could also say congruent circles, then they are congruent. So for example, if I have circle O, and this is point A, and this is point B, I know that OA has to be congruent to OB. It's as simple as that. So let's turn the page and check out our next idea. All right. Uh, we talked about congruence uh, at the beginning of this chapter. We talked about specifically congruent figures. So uh, we remember that definitions are reversible. So we said originally if all corresponding parts are congruent, if all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. We're going to flip that definition and use it the other way today. So we're going to say if triangles are congruent, then all corresponding parts are congruent. So again, this is the same definition we used. We just did it in the other direction at the beginning of this chapter. We talked about having all corresponding parts congruent to get the triangles congruent. All right, so using those ideas, let's see what we can do in some of these proofs, the radii and then this corresponding parts piece. So we are given circle P, that's it. Anytime you're given a circle, you should be looking for radii. So let's say PD, that's a radius, as is PC and PA and PB. They all go from the center to a point on the circle. So I can get them all congruent, and I can simply say PA is congruent to PB is congruent to PC is congruent to PD. And I'm just going to shorten it to this. If radii, 
then they're congruent. How about that? So I'm pretty close. Um, just like we did in the last section, we're really going to be working on getting congruent triangles. This piece here is just an extra step past congruent triangles. So when I look at my figure, I'm pretty close. I have these two sides matching these two sides, and if I look right in the middle, I should see vertical angles. I should see that angle CPD, this angle, matches angle APB, this angle right here. Angle CPD should be congruent to angle APB if angles are vertical angles then they are congruent. Now when I look at my triangles I should see two sides and an included angle. Two sides and an included angle. So now I can say triangle CPD is congruent to triangle and I'm matching up the points carefully APB by side, angle, side. That is just what we did in the last lesson. Now notice that's not the prove, which is what we always had before. Now I'm trying to get segment AB congruent to CD. And hopefully you see how this applies. I now have the triangles congruent, right? I've done that, but what I learned in the last section. Now that the triangles are congruent, any other corresponding part that you want will also be congruent. So I specifically want part AB and I want part CD. So now that's one little extra step to say AB is congruent to CD using my definition up here in the opposite order. I say if triangles congruent then corresponding parts are congruent. And you see I'm using some abbreviations there. So let's look at that again in two. We have some more circles. We have circle A and we also have circle B. Let's just start with those before we look at the proof. Circles give us radii. So in circle A, I have radius AC and I have radius AD. I can get those congruent. And in circle B, I have radius BC and I also have radius BD. So those should be congruent. I cannot say that they're all congruent because they're not in the same size circles. So if radii, then congruent. So again, be careful not to match them all up. They're two different size circles. So these two match and these two match. Well, I'm looking pretty good on my triangles here. I'm always looking for congruent triangles. Right? I need one more piece to get them congruent. And hopefully you can see that they share AB right in the middle here. So I can say AB is congruent to AB. Remember, that's the reflexive property. I'm going to abbreviate. I'm going to put some markings on that so then I can see my top triangle is congruent to my bottom triangle. If I call the top one ACB, I have to call the bottom one ADB to line it up right. And that should be by the side, side, side postulate. But now again, that's not what I want. I need angle CBA, which is this angle, congruent to DBA, which is this angle. All right? But once I know triangles are congruent, I know all their corresponding parts are congruent. These are corresponding parts. So now it's one extra step. Angle CBA is congruent to angle DBA by if triangles congruent then corresponding parts are congruent. All right, example three. I'm given SM congruent to PM. I'm going to mark that on my diagram. And I'm given MW bisects angle SMP. Okay, I know about bisecting an angle. Bisecting an angle gives me two congruent angles. So let's find that. S, M, P is this angle right here. And it got bisected by M, W. So I can see that these are my two congruent angles. I'm going to mark them and then I'm going to say that in my proof. Angle S, M, W congruent to angle P, M, W if array bisects an angle, then 
then it divides it into two congruent angles. That's from our last chapter. Well, if I'm thinking about congruent triangles, I've got two parts. I've got a side and I've got an angle. Hopefully you can see that they share side MW. That's reflexive. I'm going to put a mark there. And then I know I can get my triangles congruent. I'm matching up. SMW would go PMW. So make sure you line up your points carefully. And that is by side, angle, side. Two sides and the included angle, right? A side, a side, and the angle between. A side, a side, and the angle between. That's not what they want. They want SW and WP, but those are the corresponding parts. So just like we did before, I can now tack on one additional step. And I can say if the triangles are congruent, then the corresponding parts are congruent. At this point, if you think you have this down, go ahead and hit pause and try the remaining examples on your own. Otherwise, stay with me and we'll do them together. If you try them on your own, please check when you've finished. All right, example four. We have circle O. We have angle T, complementary to angle MOT, and angle S, complementary to angle POS. So ding, 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 ding. I have two of those. I'm going to put them in a box, but I don't have anything congruent yet, so I'm going to hold off. I'm going to use circle O. I have to carefully look for radii in the picture, right? I see radius O to T. I also see radius O to S. There are actually two other radii in here. There's radius OK and there's radius OR. I don't think I need those yet, so I'm going to leave those off for the moment. But if you put them in there, that is OK too. So if radii, then they are congruent. And I chose those two because they're part of the triangles. Well, that still doesn't help me here in the box, so I'm not sure how to use that yet. But when I look in the picture, remember there are things we have to see. And if I look right here at vertex O, remember you have to look for vertical angles in the diagram, and there they are. So angle T-O-M, angle TOM, should be congruent to angle SOP, S-O-P, and that's by vertical angles. So if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. But now I look back up here and I have TOM, which is this guy right here, and I have SOP, which is this guy right here. I wrote them in a different order, but I have those two angles congruent. So now I think I can use that theorem to say angle T is congruent to angle S. This is from the previous chapter. Remember this one says if two angles complementary to congruent angles, then congruent. So I'm going to mark that on my diagram. And once I mark that, I can see my triangles are congruent. So I can say triangle tom is congruent, right? T-O-M, if I get the letters matching, that would be S-O-P. And I have two angles and the included side. I have the side between the two angles. That is angle, side, angle. And now we extend it because MO and PO are corresponding parts. So MO congruent to PO. If triangles congruent, then corresponding parts are congruent. So that's the one new additional step. Example five, I have AB congruent to BC and angle one congruent to angle two. So AB and BC, angle one and angle two. Well, I'm looking at angle one and angle two and I realize they're not even inside my triangle, but I recognize that this relationship is supplementary. So I'm gonna go ahead down that route. I'm gonna say angle EBD 
is a straight angle. That's step one. Step two here, or step three in the proof, is to say I have supplementary angles. So angle one, sup to angle ABD. That's this one and this one. And angle two, sup to this guy right here, which is angle CBD. If angles add to 180 degrees, then sup, I can put them in a box. I have one congruent to two, therefore that gets me ABD congruent to CBD by if angles are supplementary to congruent angles, then congruent. That again is from the last chapter, so I'm going to mark those. I'm really close on my triangles. I can see now that they share segment BD. So I can say BD is congruent to BD by reflexive. If I put a mark on that one, I can see then that triangle ABD, I'm matching up the letters, would be congruent to CBD. And that's two sides and an included angle two sides and an included angle, so that is side, angle, side. This says DE bisects angle ADC. Well, let's look at what that means here, because that's not exactly what we have. DE, I need this ray to bisect this angle. The only way I can get a bisector, that's not a corresponding part, to get a bisector, I'd have to have these two angles congruent. Well, those two should be congruent because my triangles are congruent. So in step seven, I'm going to say angle ADB is congruent to angle CDB if triangles are congruent then corresponding parts are congruent. And now because I know those angles are congruent, I can now say I have a bisector. So now I can say DE bisects angle ADC because if a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it bisects the angle. One more example here. I have AE congruent to FC. I have FB congruent to DE, and I have angle CFB congruent to angle AED. CFB congruent to AED. I have those two angles congruent, and I'm trying to prove angles 1 and angle 2. So the first thing I notice is that I have these two triangles already congruent. But the bad news is they don't contain angles 1 and 2, so that doesn't really help me so much. So to get angles 1 and 2, I really need the top triangle here and the bottom one. Well, I have this side. I don't know how this angle can help me. Mm. You should be looking at this pair and this pair and realize they are supplementary. So I'm going to say angle AEF and angle CFE are straight angles. That's assumed. Then I'm going to say angle, um, what was it called up here? AED is sup to angle DEF. And I'm going to say the other one, CFB, is sup to angle BFE. If angles add to 180, then sup, I can put them in a box, and I see above I have these two congruent. That's these first two. So therefore, angle DEF will be congruent to angle BFE. That's this guy and this guy. So I got those using supplementary. Remember that reason? 
if angles are sup to congruent angles, then they are congruent. I'm really close. If I look at these top and bottom triangles, I have a side and an angle, a side and an angle. Look at this picture right here. I want you to look at segment AC, and I want you to realize we have AE congruent to FC. So if you think back to our addition subtraction days, I have two segments with an adjoining segment in between. That should signal to you that you can add. If I add EF to the one on the left, I get this segment. If I add EF to the one on the right, I get this segment. So I can say that segment AE is congruent to segment EC by if the same segment is added to congruent segs, then the sums are congruent. Once I have those purple ones in place, I have this top triangle congruent to this bottom triangle by side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So I can say triangle DEC is congruent to triangle BEA by side, angle, side, and then angles 1 and 2 are now corresponding parts. If triangles congruent, then corresponding parts are congruent. So again, that one was particularly tricky because they gave you information to get the left and right triangles, but somehow you had to transform that information using supplementary angles and then addition to get the top and the bottom triangles congruent because they're the ones that contained angles 1 and 2. That was a tough one.